it happen. <laughs> Nerdcity <City> 7. <laughs> Nerd 7. Huddersfield nil. I've just gone and bought my morning paper because, you know, someone's got to prop the industry up. Got the Times today. Surprised we're not on the back page, must admit. Um, apparently, Champions League uh, quarterfinals are more important. I don't know about that. Seven goal Norwich City, all but promoted. Norwich City conjured up an extraordinary first half of ruthless football that all but confirmed a deserved return to the Premier League. Five up at half-time, an eventual seven-goal success featuring a team in Pukki hat-trick as prime Daniel Farker's team for a potential promotion party on Saturday. Victory away at Derby County, plus news that Brentford and Swansea have not won, would be enough for an instant return to the top flight. There are just 17 points clear of third place Brentford. Um, Daniel Farker said, the best football is when you make it look simple. I knew that my players are capable of, um, I would have also taken a dirty 1-0. Everything came together. There's a whole 600 words of just people loving Norwich City, essentially. I think people are jealous of Norwich at this point because we're just so good. We're, we're scarily good. I've got, the table there. I love looking at the tables in the newspaper. There's something very uh, authentic about that. We were at 87 points, uh, played 40. Watford played 40, 79 points, so eight points behind. Brentford, who Ivan Tony famously said um, last month, I think, or maybe February, um, that they are still think they can catch Norwich. Brentford are, are 17 points behind Norwich City at this stage, and, and Swansea are 18 points, and then Barnsley are basically in a different league uh, in fifth. So, job done, basically, and uh, just phenomenal. Like, it's the following morning. I've basically, thankfully I start work late today, but I've just laid in bed this morning, just shutting my eyes and just thinking about Kieran Dow running through and Emi Buendia playing these majestic passes and Timu Puki just ruthlessly banging shots into the top corner what did we do to get so lucky i mean that was one of the well that was the most perfect performance i've ever seen watching Norris city um we had an 87 year old granddad watching um the watch along last night with with his grandson and the grandson commented i'm, I'm watching this my 87 year old granddad and he said he has watched Norris city all his life since a young boy and this is the best team he's ever seen it was effortless, it was majestic, it was just sublime. I mean, I said on the watch along um, before we started, I think this is going to be our biggest win of the season. I think everything had just kind of fallen into place. We were clearly fired up from um, conceding late on against Preston, where we should have won the game, and Timmy Puki had a really poor day at the office that day. That was a disappointing result, and you could just feel the vibe around the place. Although we're not there, you know, the people I've spoken to who have spoken to Daniel Farker and the things coming out in the press, you knew that Farker wanted a, a response from that. And other results had gone our way. Um, Brentford dropping points, Swansea losing. You know, this was the opportunity on Sky, under the lights, Tuesday night to go, yep, this is us. We are coming back to the Premier League and this time we are properly going to compete. And it was just a stunning performance. I mean... So, so chuffed for, for Temu um, to get that hat-trick because he had seven shots against Preston, didn't score one of them, a, a poor outing from him on that occasion. But you could see that he was getting in the right areas and the movement was there. Um, and when you've got Emi Buendia playing passes like Emi Buendia plays, you are going to get a, a fair amount of chances. And Timu Puki doesn't have two off days in a row. 25 league goals for him this season. Six games left seriously wouldn't put it past him to get a 30 goal season um, only two players have gone back to back 25 goal plus seasons in championship I think in the last decade that's Jordan Rhodes and now Tammy Pukki uh, he's very much written himself in Norwich City history I think he's into the top 10 all-time top Norwich City goal scorers only Ralph Hunt I believe has um, got to the amount of goals that Tammy Pukki has quicker than him 
He surpassed Grant Holt's kind of goal to game scoring ratio at this stage. I mean, the amount of records that were broken last night for Norwich City was absolutely phenomenal. Um, go and check out NCFC numbers on Twitter and just look at the feed. It's stat after stat after stat of record breaking. And Norwich City continuously find new levels to go to. I mean, I've seen performance this, this season, like um, Bristol City at home, um, Brentford when we beat Swansea at home. These types of performances where you go, wow, like for a championship side, this is really impressive. But last night, I mean, it was phenomenal. There were, there were people I follow on Twitter, not Norwich fans, not vaguely interested in um, in Norwich City, really, who were, you know, switching the Champions League off to tune into, into what was going on at Carrow Road because they knew that this was history in the making. Um, six games left. What do we need? 13 points to get to 100. I mean, we're averaging well over two points per game this season. I've got absolutely no doubt in my mind that, that we'll get to the 100 points tally. Uh, I think 105 points is the maximum we can get. So, you know, we, we're allowed to drop a few more points from here on there. But just front to back like exceptional and the funny thing is is seven goals I, I can't speak about every single well I could speak about every single one on here we've got a 24 hour watch along coming up so I'm going to save you know a few lines of material for that um, but when you've scored that many goals sometimes you forget about the lead up to the goals and I'm just thinking back I think the Dowell one was probably my favourite it was just it was at that point when Kieran Dow scored, I think that was the fifth, wasn't it? Um, one, two, three. Yeah, fifth. The fifth goal was Dow, and you just saw this close-up of Richard Keogh, a seasoned, experienced Championship defender. It was like he'd seen a ghost. He, you could just tell he wanted the earth to swallow him up. He wanted to go inside in the warm, have a bovril, and just go. Yep, I admit the feet. These are a lot better than me. Can we just call it a day? And yet, still, it was. It was bordering on bullying by the end. Norwich City were absolutely relentless. 7-0 up, five minutes to play, and Norwich City are still pounding on the door, wanting an eighth, wanting a ninth, wanting a tenth. The, the, the opening half an hour of that game was stunning. Absolutely stung, stunning. And, and if you watch back the, the watch along, you kind of progressively see like the first goal come on like serious okay let's just grind out a professional win by the seventh I was on the floor just giggling giggling like a child because you know what we were watching was just outrageous it was such fun and I, and I think that's the main thing isn't it I think there are a lot of Norwich fans up and down the country across the world that just tuned in and had good fun last night um, I think we all knew that Premier League football was coming next season like a good few games ago now but that was what really kind of tipped it because coming off the back of two draws Watford winning games and playing really nice football there were a few nerves creeping in um, but I mean what can I say what can I say Dowell brilliant Hugh Gill coming on I, I must admit I didn't even see him come on and then he scored and I'm starting to think oh my god I actually am in a dream because how Hugh Gill scored when he's not playing he's, he was playing he'd been subbed on I'd missed it probably watching the, the previous six goals back um, just across the pitch a special mention as well to, to Big Andy at the back um, who was phenomenal Andrew Omadamad Belly um, 18 years old a, a clean sheet a 7-0 win on your um, home debut and already looking like a very assured championship defender and it's remarkable you know this isn't normal what we're watching whether it's Bally Mumba whether it's Jakob Sorensen whether it's Andrew Amadama Belli um, just these youngsters thrown in the deep end and expected to swim and swimming like Michael Phelps I mean it's exceptional um, and what I loved even even more so was at the end of the game and the, the sky cameras kind of zoomed in and it was Daniel Farker and, and Andrew f a good five minutes after full time and Farker's kind of like clearly talk, talking him through something he wasn't best pleased with in a perfect 7-0 defeat. And, th and they're the kind of levels that you need to get to where Norwich have done, you know, finding little, not mistakes, but moments where you know, Omadama Belli can go from a 9.9 .9 to a 10. Um, he's clearly got a very bright future and, and 
when you've got the likes of Daniel Farker at the football club, you know your youth players are in very safe hands and it's why we can demand stupid amounts of money for Todd Cantwell, Emmy Buendia, Ben Godfrey, James Madison because we're just an absolute breeding ground for top talent. Absolutely blown away. As, as, uh, as I say, we can get promoted on Saturday if we beat Derby and both Brentford and Swansea fail to win. Um, which is probably unlikely, but I genuinely thought it was going to be another couple of weeks and everyone was like, we're 17 points clear of third. I was like, no, we're not. And then I looked at the table and we are 17 points clear of third place. And it just goes to show we, we'd lost 15 and 17 coming into this into this championship calendar. I remember vividly, I've said it before, I've sat in the old red line. We've just been beaten to Derby um, at Carrow Road. And I thought, I can't see where the next win's coming from. And uh, we've hardly lost a game since then. And just one for fun. Balmy. Absolutely balmy. I, I'm going to go and watch the highlights back for an, another few times now and just really bask this in. And that's my message to all of you. Enjoy this team because it's not going to be 7-0 every week in the Premier League. I can, I can assure you of that. And look, yes, it would be great if we were there, but don't worry about that. We're, we are witnessing greatness. And uh, just looking at that picture of Tamey Puki. Just makes me incredibly happy. Thanks for watching, everyone. Enjoy it. Uh, promotion soon. You don't want to miss the stuff we've got coming up on TNC. We've got 24-hour watch-alongs, live watch-alongs for every single game for the rest of the season, podcasts, just all that nonsense, basically. So hit subscribe, and uh, I can't wait to be back again. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you later. Bye-bye.